So thank you, Steve, for this introduction. And uh, thank you also for this uh, invitation, which gave me the opportunity to present you our work obtained in the Laboratory of Mass Spectrometry of Interaction and Systems at the University of Strasbourg. And this is a collaboration with SciEx and also with uh, the Centre d'Immunologie Pierre Fabre, uh, with the collaboration with Alain Beck. So my presentation will be uh, on the multi-level characterization of biotherapeutics using CSIMS uh, from the intact uh, protein to peptin mapping approach. So uh, everybody is here are aware about uh, capillary electrophoresis, so I don't, I'm not here to, to perform a, a, a course about that. But just one slide to tell you that in that presentation, you will have only results with uh, capillary zone electrophoresis. So in that uh, mode, uh, analytes are separated depending on their charge and size. And we know that CE provides fast separation, great efficiency, and uh, low sample consumption. So of course, the question is uh, about the coupling between capillary zone electrophoresis and mass spectrometry, especially using uh, near CMS. Of course, this is to take advantage of the two uh, technology. First, the capillary electrophoresis with the great efficiency and, of course, the ultra-low flow rate. And also, uh, for the uh, mass spectrometry, the sensitivity, the selectivity, and the possibility to obtain structural information. But I just draw your attention about the ultra-low flow rate because, for me, this is the major advantage of uh, capillary electrophoresis when you want to perform a coupling between uh, CE and ESIMS. Because following <coughs> the uh, theory developed by Professor Mann and Professor Vin, and also the uh, theory developed by the group of Professor Karas, working with ultra low flow rate uh, allows to increase sensitivity, to minimize ion, ion, uh, ion suppression, and then to maximize ionization efficiency. And then I think that CSI is the ideal coupling between uh, CE and mass spectrometry. So here is the outline of my presentation, four different parts about the characterization of uh, biotherapeutics. The first part would be on the monoclonal antibodies uh, primary structure characterization using CSI uh, MS. The second part will be on the biosimilarity assessment uh, <coughs> using uh, uh, the same uh, system. And the third part will be on the antibody drug conjugate characterization by CSI MS. And the final part of my presentation will be of an, another strategy to the separation and the characterization of uh, cetuximab variants by a middle up approach using uh, uh, another strategy, uh, offline coupling between CEUV and uh, ESIMS. So, just one slide about the system uh, the CSI <coughs> interface. You have uh, a, a good presentation, a good introduction. Uh, of uh, Steve uh, just before my presentation. The CSI interface is represented here. Uh, this is now commercialized by SciEx. And uh, we know that this is the system uh, which allows to be operated using nanofluorates. And then uh, this is favorable to ISI ionization. The system is represented here with a separation capillary etched by acidic etching at the end of the capillary to obtain a porous segment. This capillary is placed on a stainless steel cannula, represented in blue, and this stainless, stainless steel cannula is filled by a static conductive liquid. The same uh, liquid uh, commonly used as the background electrolyte. And then we, obtain, we maintain the electrical field uh, here, and we obtain at the end of the capillary the results of the separation, the ultra-low flow separation. So today you have a lot of paper and uh, a lot of authors are here today uh, uh, on the evaluation of this system uh, for different uh, applications. And the, we know that CSIMS showed improved uh, sensitivity as compared <coughs> to the uh, Schist liquid uh, interface. So concerning the application, the first application is about the monoclonal antibodies characterization using CSIMS. So why the monoclonal antibody? Of course, because uh, the, these uh, compounds are therapeutics and attract the most interest due to their strong therapeutic potency. Today, uh, we have over than 43 uh, MABs in the market and uh, more than 30 MABs here are uh, in the clinical trial phase three. So MAB specificity, 
for its antigen opens <coughs> new avenues for therapeutic treatment, especially in the way field of oncology, of autoimmune disease or transplant rejection prevention. And for us, for the scientists, for the analytical scientists, MABs are a complex and heterogeneous glycoprotein representing a challenge, a real challenge for analytical science, for all the analytical science, and of course for CE and for CEMS. There are a need of uh, characterization on different levels of the MABs and a necessity of precise and high throughput characterization. So here you have the representation of a classical uh, uh, immunoglobulin 1, a monoclonal antibody. This is a trastuzumab, also called Herceptin. This is our model in this presentation. Represented here, you have uh, the two heavy chain and the two light chain, <coughs> with in the constant, uh, in the blue, uh, dark blue part, this is the constant part of the monoclonal antibodies, and uh, in the light blue, this is the variable part. This part are engaged in the recognition process with the uh, antigen, and then there is a need of characterization uh, of this part. You also see that this is a complex uh, uh, heterogeneous protein with different uh, post-translational mo uh, modification uh, called PTM hotspots. There are some methanine oxidation, the amidation of asparagine, and one site of glycosylation with the major uh, glycan represented on this slide. So <laughs> our uh, workflow is very simple. This is a bottom-up proteomic strategy, classical bottom-up proteomic strategy, using an in-solution triptych digestion. <coughs> After that, we analyzed by transient ITP, CESI, MSMS. The TITP is a pre-concentration step classically used uh, in CE and described in the literature. And we perform after that the amino sequence characterization, the uh, research of the glycosylation structure, and also the PTM hotspots characterization using different uh, software as PeakView or BioPharmaView. And here is the results. So we obtained <coughs> two years ago now uh, on the MSMS uh, amino acid sequence characterization on the trastuzumab, we obtain 100% sequence coverage on the heavy chain and on the light chain in a single injection through only purely triptych unmodified peptide. And to understand these results, the fact that we obtain 100%, we just uh, have to, to, um, to, to see the mechanism of CE because CE allows separation and successful detection of a large variety of peptide. On this slide, you can see that in a single injection, we uh, are able to uh, detect and characterize a small peptide. Here you have the uh, results of a peptide with three amino acids, and also a peptide with uh, 63 amino acids with the MSMS uh, uh, spectra. Uh, and this, of course, in a single analysis. Concerning the PTM hotspots and the glycosylation, we focus our research, our characterization on the uh, PTM hotspots uh, engage in the recognition process with the antigen. So this is the methionine oxidation, the amidation of asparagine, the isoaspartic, uh, isomerization of aspartic acid, and the glutamic uh, acid cyclization on the end terminal uh, on the heavy chain. And of course, the characterization of the glyco, uh, pro uh, glycosylation. So first about the glycosylation, Using the same data of CESI MSMS uh, analysis, we obtain the detection of 15 different glycosylation using the MS spectra, and we have the characterization of nine different structures using the MSMS uh, spectra. Concerning now the uh, representation of uh, this glyco uh, glycoform, this is the representation uh, of the relative abundance of different uh, glycoform. We obtained the five major glycoform, but also we can, using the CSI uh, system, we have the possibility to detect weakly abundant glycosylation. And this is due to the fact that we work with ultra low flow separation. So we increase the sensitivity. We have this opportunity. And you can see that we ha also have uh, this very uh, weak abundant glycoform. Concerning now the PTM hotspots, so the first one is the uh, N-terminal glutamic acid cyclization. 
you can see here the extracted ion electrophorogram of the uh, modified and the unmodified and the modified peptide. So uh, CE mechanism uh, allow the separation of this peptide because we have a difference of mass. The, this is around uh, 17 Dalton. And then, of course, this is favorable condition to estimate sample modification level. We can do also uh, um, relative quantitation. Another uh, post-translational modification is the methionine oxidation represented here. In that case, we have a mass shift of uh, six, around 16 Dalton, leading to the separation on the modified and the unmodified peptide. And we obtained, of course, the MS spectra and the MSM, uh, the MSM spectra of these two peptides with the modification, with the location of the modification. So this is, of course, confirmed by the, by the MSMS uh, spectra. And uh, another uh, separation, another um, uh, characterization, uh, PTM characterization, is the asparagine deamidation. In that case, we have just a shift of around one Dalton, but we also have a mobility uh, change and the characterization of the modified and the unmodified peptide with the MS and the MSMS spectra. Here you have the MSMS spectra with the asparagine and the modified uh, asparagine. So CE separation of the amidated peptide is, of course, the identification of the modification by MS, and it is also favorable to do a relative quantitation. The last one is more surprising for us because this is aspartic acid isomerization. In that case, there is no difference of charge and no difference of mass. But in all cases, we obtain two peaks, two different peaks, corresponding to the uh, uh, same MSMS uh, spectra. So the conclusion is, of course, that C separation prior to MS analysis allow in this particular case to include aspartic acid isomerization in the overall characterization workflow. And this is, of course, uh, very important. But the question was, of course, are you sure that there, this is not uh, an artifact, just an artifact, because we don't have the possibility to distinguish the two uh, MSMS spectra. So we perform the same study, but in that case, with a synthetic, pepti synthetic, pep synthetic peptide, I'm sorry, with the peptide with an aspartic acid and the peptide with an iso-D. And at different ratio, you can see that we have an increase of the modified peptide. And then we conclude that there is a separation of this modification using CESI uh, MS. So that was uh, the first study on the characterization of monoclonal antibodies. And the second part will be on the biosimilarity assessment using this method, using this workflow. Because you know that uh, as several patents are ending in the next few months or, or next, uh, next few years, and uh, other companies uh, should have the possibility to commercialize um, unprotected maps. But the problem is with maps that this is very complex and uh, the, the production process is also very complex. So it makes it nearly impossible to produce a strict copy uh, to the same product of the innovator. So, uh, the FDA, the regulation agency, the American FDA or the European EMA, are introducing guidelines to help biopharmaceutical, co biopharmaceutical companies to determine the key feature needed for a biosimilarity between two products in terms of structures or pharmacodynamics or pharmacokinetics. And of course, this is in the aim to reduce the uh, clinical trials. So. <clears throat> We work with uh, Pierre Fabre, with Alain Beck, and we have the opportunity to, to test different systems. Here I just show you the uh, um, comparison between the, the cetuximab and a, a candidate biosimilar. So we perform exactly the same uh, workflow. And here you have the results on the amino acid second uh, similarity on the cetuximab and on the uh, biosimilar candidate. And in a single analysis, we obtain 100% seconds coverage on the cetuximab and is a biosimilar candidate. So there is no problem of uh, sequence. 
we obtain the complete sequence, of course, uh, through peptide, peptide without miscleavage or uh, uh, PTMs. And uh, another uh, advantage of this technology is the fact that we remark that CSIMS enabled to confirm an error recently published in the literature about the uh, sequence. <coughs> Concerning now the glycosylation, I represented here the relative abundance of the different glycan we obtain for the cetuximab and the cetuximab uh, candidate, the candidate. Um, one thing very important is that the fact that cetuximab has two different sites of glycosylation, one in the FC over two part here, and one in the FD part, in the variable part, represented here. And the power of our strategy is the fact that we determine, we characterize the glycopeptide and not the glycan, and then we can localize the different uh, glycan uh, uh, in this protein. So first, this is the FC over two glycosylation site, characterization represented here. And you can see that we obtain a significant number of glycan characterized for the cetuximab and the uh, can, uh, biosimilar candidate. You can, see, you, you can also see that uh, we have a difference of uh, uh, relative abundance. And this is not a surprise because uh, this is impossible to obtain a strict copy of the innovator. So now I just have to uh, give my results to the regulation agency to ask if it is rejected or an accepted biosimilar with this kind of results. So we obtain different in glycophon uh, dis distribution. But concerning the second site, the FD site, here you have the represented uh, uh, the glycoprofiling for the cetuximab and the uh, candidate. And you can see that we obtain different glycan, but only three glycan are common in the two samples. So this is a problem. And of course, we also uh, see that 30% of glycan contains uh, an acetyl neuramic acid, so sialic acid residue, especially in the candidate. And then this is a problem, of course. This biosimilar is rejected. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So the third part of my talk will be on the characterization of another uh, biotherapeutics, a new biotherapeutics, the uh, antibody drug conjugate, the ADC, characterized with the, using the CSI MS. So ADC, antibody drug conjugates, are a new class of biopharmaceutical drugs for cancer treatment. Here you have the representation of the ADC. This is a classical monoclonal antibodies, but linked with a drug, a toxin, and uh, we used these MABs uh, to uh, go to the uh, cell cancer and to leave his toxin only on the cancer uh, cell. So uh, there is two different uh, ADC in the market today, and we work on the uh, cysteine-linked ADC represented here. So you have the monoclonal antibodies, and you have the different position, possible position. There is not eight drug uh, always, but possible position, one, two, three, four, five, six, until eight. And the drug, the structure of the drug, and the problem of <coughs> this drug is the fact that the drug is always hydrophobic. So for the separation, this is, of course, a problem, especially using uh, HPLC. So we perform, uh, we have two objectives on this study. The first objective, objective was the characterization of the intact ADC with the determination of the average uh, drug antibody ratio and the drug antibody ratio uh, distribution because this could characterize, this is the first characterization of an ADC. So our uh, strategy was to infuse the uh, ADC in native condition using the CESI 8000 as a uh, um, uh, nano ESI infusion platform. And of course, the second strategy was to use the peptide mapping uh, strategy, the classical workflow, to uh, characterize the amino acid sequence, the PTMs, and of course, the drug conjugate peptide. And here is represented in this table 
the four different position, possible position in, of this uh, uh, drug on the, uh, on the monoclonal antibodies. So the first uh, results are the dark distribution we obtain <coughs> in native condition. So this is the uh, uh, raw MS spectra and the deconvoluted mass spectra. We can see that we have 0, 1, 2, 3 until 8 drugs and we can determine with the, uh, um, uh, this uh, relation, uh, with the, 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 the measurement of the area or the intensity, the uh, drug antibody ratio, this is 3.7 for this kind of molecule, this is uh, totally in agreement with the literature. So after that, we perform the amino acid sequence characterization, so we perform the same uh, experiment, but in that case, we obtain only 94% of the sequence uh, coverage achieved in a single injection. So we have just one problem, this peptide, this is just one peptide, one huge peptide, but classical peptide. Normally we can see this kind of peptide using CSIMS. So we perform a second uh, try, not with triptych digestion, but with chymotriptic digestion, and we obtain uh, an increase of uh, sequence coverage until 99% we also ha we, uh, always have a problem for this peptide and uh, we are still in, uh, 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 we research the problem with this type of peptide because I think that there are maybe a problem of sequence and not of, of meter. Concerning now the uh, drug and the peptide bearing these drugs, we focus our research on the, these three peptides. There is three peptides because this peptide can be a one or two um, uh, drugs. And then we have the detection and the characterization using MSMS spectra of the four modified peptide. So using MSMS spectra, as I told you. And here you have the results obtained. For example, this is the uh, peptide uh, uh, bearing by the LCHC interchain. We have the extracted ion electrophorogram represented here for two different uh, uh, charge states, the 3 plus and the 2 plus, and we obtain the MSMS spectra for this uh, charge state or this one, and <coughs> uh, this is this one, I'm sorry, and we obtain always <coughs> the uh, same MSMS spectra for all the peptide bearing the drug because this is the signature of the drug fragmentation. And this is, of course, very interesting if you want to characterize the different position of uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, peptide. Another advantage, of course, is the CE mechanism because there are a huge difference between the modified and the unmodified peptide. Uh, this is, the, the, of course, a mass shift. And then we obtain the separation of the unmodified and the modified peptide. So C separation of drug peptides uh, is the identification of the modification by MS. Of course, this is the same results we obtain with the uh, PTM hotspots. So finally, this is my uh, last part. Uh, I changed the level of my characterization. I spoke about peptide mapping, and now I want to show you some results about uh, uh, not intact molecule, uh, intact protein, but partially digested protein using a middle-up approach. This is on the glycoform uh, separation and the characterization and the separation of glycoform of cetuximab variants using a middle-up approach by a new strategy, the, an offline coupling, coupling between CEUV and uh, ESIMS using CSI as infusion platform. Because uh, today, as I told you in my introduction, MARBs are complex uh, and heterogeneous glycoprotein <coughs> representing a challenge to analytical science. And if, of course, there is a need of characterization of this biotherapeutics at different levels, peptide levels and intact, of course, intact protein levels. But in the literature today, and I think that uh, it, will be, it, it will be changed very quickly, but today the classical condition described are only with uh, a huge concentration of uh, amino uh, capric acid and also the use of uh, additives of, uh, or detergents. 
and this is of course not compatible with ESI uh, MS detection. So we changed the strategy and we use in that case an offline coupling strategy using the CEUV system with a fraction collection and after that we perform an infusion by, CSI 8, by the CSI 8000 uh, MS, just an infusion. The uh, strategy was like uh, that, an IDES digestion, this uh, cetuximab uh, 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 is uh, digested by uh, IDES, uh, an, uh, an enzymatic re re reaction, to obtain two different parts, the FAB prim 2 represented here, and the FC over 2 uh, represented here. Each part bear one glycosylation. So after that, we perform an analysis by CEUV fraction collection and an analysis by nano ESI infusion. <coughs> and we obtain the characterization of FC over 2 variants and the characterization of the FAB prim 2 variants. So first, concerning the results we obtained with the, uh, on the uh, FC over 2 variants, first you can see the CE separation the CE separation for two different uh, parts, the FC over 2 and the FAB print 2, we obtained uh, eight peaks. So this is good, of course. We have a separation of these different variants. And the question is uh, how it is possible. The first answer is concerning the three first peaks. The three first peaks correspond to the FC over 2 variants. Uh, we have the characterization of seven different glycoforms represented here. And we know that this is not involved in the separation process because we obtain these seven glycoform in the peak one and the peak three, but the difference is a mass shift of 128 represented a loss of um, lysine. So we have a good separation of the FC over two uh, system and the FC over two with a, a loss of a lysine uh, and this is totally in agreement with the literature using cetuximab. The problem is concerning the PIC2, because, because the PIC2 is a mixture of the FC over 2 and the FC over 2 minus K uh, variants. We have exactly the same profile, but repeated in the uh, system in the PIC2. And this is due to the fact that we work with the nurturing condition with native condition, we obtained the separation of homodimer and heterodimer of this, uh, uh, this uh, variants. So we have in the peak one an homodimer of FC over 2, and in the peak two an heterodimer of the FC over 2 and FC over 2 minus K, and in the third peak we obtain a homodimer of FC over 2 minus K. So this is the first separation of FC over 2 aggregates using C uh, and CMS, of course. And concerning the FAB print 2 variants, in that case, we have uh, three uh, last peak, the characterization of eight uh, glycoform, bearing here and represented by this uh, glycoform, and we obtain a separation due, in that case, to the, present th the, the presence of a sialic acid residue. Here you have one sialic acid, and there is a change of the charge due to the presence of this sialic acid and then the separation of this glycoform. Here you have the presence of two different sialic acids. So this is also the first separation of glycoform of monoclonal antibodies uh, and uh, especially on the FAB print 2 part. So in conclusion, I show you a global presentation on the characterization we perform in the laboratory. Uh, about the monoclonal antibody primary structure characterization, we obtain 100% second coverage of uh, amino acid, 100% uh, second coverage amino acid sequence characterization. We obtain a 15 glycoform characterization and all PTM hotspots characterization. We also perform uh, in uh, several cases the biosimilarity assessment using CSI uh, MS. And on about the characterization of ADC, we obtained the average DAR, um, DAR measurements, 99%, uh, and uh, I prefer to tell you 100, but this is 99% uh, amino acid sequence characterization, and the MSMS characterization of the four modified peptide with the signature of this uh, modification. 
And concerning the uh, last part, we obtained the separation uh, and the characterization of glycoform of the uh, cetuximab by a middle up approach using an offline CEUV ESIMS with the separation of uh, FC over 2 uh, variant based on the aggregation of this part and also the separation of glycoform of the uh, FAB prim 2 variants uh, based on the presence of sialic acid. Of course, I would like to thank my laboratory, the Laboratory of uh, Mass Spectrometry of Interaction and System, directed by Emmanuel Les Wagner. I would like to thank my uh, old PhD students and my new PhD uh, students, uh, Rabba Gawal, Michael Biaki, and Nasser Saïd, uh, the Platform Proteomic uh, Strasbourg Esplanade uh, with uh, Philippe Amann, and uh, of course, uh, our collaboration with Pierre Fabre, uh, and especially with the team of Alain Beck, and the support with the SciEx and the, the old Beckman culture. Now this is over for Beckman, this is SciEx. And uh, of course, I thank you for your attention.